Hey there guys, welcome back to another MaxQ video tutorial. Uh, today we're in MaxQ's Thermal Laboratory and uh, my name is Tyler Rapp. I am a senior thermal engineer here with MaxQ and I'm directly involved in a lot of product validation and design. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about just that. We're gonna be talking about how we validate our coolers. A couple of things that we're gonna go over are what data loggers we use, our probe placement with those data loggers, and the sequence on how we pack our coolers out. For this particular video, we're going to be going over the R12 MB and discussing some frequently asked questions we get from some of our hospital clients. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is really the sequence on how we pack our coolers out. So what I have here is our R12 MB. Uh, this, this is fully packed out. It has all of the coolants and our payloads in it. So what we do first is we take our three frozen coolant bottles from the freezer and put them immediately into the cooler. The next step is get your refrigerated coolants out of your refrigerator and place those in the cooler. It's really important that the coolants go into the cooler before the payload so that it can cool the system down prior to the payloads coming in. So um, that leads us to the last step, which is getting your actual blood units from your refrigerator with the probes inserted inside and placing them in the coolers. So that's really it for the sequence. Frozen bottles first, refrigerated bottles second, and then your payloads come in. That's our recommended procedure for packing the system out. Okay, so now that you know the sequencing uh, with how we pack our systems out, now we can talk about our data loggers and uh, how we actually put those loggers into our units. So what we use are the iMinis from Cryopack. These are NIST calibrated every year. And the great thing about these data loggers is that they come with an external probe. And this is the most important part of our validation process is that our data logger comes with an external probe. And what we do is we sandwich this probe between two mock blood units, just like this. So you can slide the probe between them and either fix the two units together. Uh, what we did here is we use them with, we, we uh, fix them together with a rubber band. We also use packaging tape. So just pick one of those methods uh, to make sure that those two units can be uh, kind of squished together and sandwiched together and really hung on to that probe. And what that does is it really gets you a accurate reading of your payload's core temperature. As opposed to, if you were to use a data logger like this Elitech one, that does not have a probe on it. You can't see what the core temperature of your units are. And if you put your probe just on top of your blood unit during validation, well, you're not really reading the payload temperature. Really what you're getting is the air temperature within the box. And what we validated for and what we designed for is to read the core temperature of your payloads. What that does is allow us to make smaller, less coolant, and more efficient systems. So if a client comes to me and, and they're having issues with validation, um, usually the first thing I go to is the data logger. I um, ask them what data logger they're using, where they're placing that data logger in their cooler. It really is a very, very important step. And uh, if you guys don't have a data logger with an external probe, um, that's okay. You can go ahead and try to validate with your um, probeless data logger or, or whatever data logger that you have. The cooler very well may, may validate, but we do have customers who have had problems in the past, and this is usually a main solver for them is to get a data logger with a probe. So what we'll do is we'll leave a couple links in the description uh, to where you can look at purchasing the CryoPack iMinis for yourself, as well as a couple other data logger brands that, that we know are, are pretty good and have external probes. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is just some common issues that I have heard and seen out in the field with our clients and how we solve those problems. And maybe you can take that information and apply it to your situation and get your coolers validated. So one tip that I want to give you guys is just um, to have a plan uh, before you go through the validation process. Uh, know what you're going to do. Know that your coolants and your payloads are in the right spots so that you're not scrambling around looking for them, um, wasting time during pack out. The pace at which you pack out is pretty important. And as you use the coolers, you're gonna get quicker and quicker at packing the systems out. 
So when you're very first validating the coolers, it's important to, to have a plan and be efficient with your pack out pace. Uh, also, what I recommend is starting your data loggers on your payload units before you begin the pack out process. Before you even go to the freezer to get your frozen coolants, go ahead and start your payload units Ensure that their starting temperature is at a reasonable spot. You don't want to start the test with your units reading uh, 6.2 degrees, 6.1 degrees, uh, 1 degree Celsius. You really want to make sure that those units are, you know, between 3 and, and 5 degrees before you ever start the test. Uh, that, that'll save you a ton of time and hopefully get you validating on your first try, which is ultimately what, where, where we want to get you guys. Okay, so for the next tip, I want to talk about um, the data logger a little bit. So we recommend placing the probe in your units um, during preconditioning. Um, you don't want to, whenever you're starting the test, to have to go get your probe, place it between the unit, tape it up, and then start the probe, and then put it in the cooler. Um, that's obviously leaving the, the payload unit at room temperature exposed with no protection for too long. So a big helpful step is to go ahead and put your probe where it's going to be, tape the units up, and start the data water in the refrigerator before you ever begin the process. That'll help out a ton and that'll, that, that will keep you from having false negatives with your units just being in room temperature warming up unnecessarily. That's really all I have for you guys today. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, two main takeaways that I want you to get from this video are uh, if you're having issues validating, make sure that your pace is good. Make sure that your plan is good before you begin the validation process. And really be cognizant of your data loggers, the time at which you start those data loggers, and what data logger you're actually using. Now, there are other problems out there. Um, but we don't have time to discuss them on this video. If you're still having issues with validation, please feel free to contact us. We have a full service thermal laboratory and a dedicated team to help you guys out with validation. So please don't hesitate to contact us and thank you guys for your time today. Bye.